Hello and happy sketching. I want to show you something. For this video, we are going to the museum. I am logged in to Metropolitan Museum and I want to show you two pictures of Madonna. This is a Madonna from uh, Giovanni Bellini and here we have the other Madonna from Simone Martini. If we have a closer look to the dates, we are in 1326 here and we are in 1480s uh, here. This means this picture is 100 years or even more uh, older than the other one. What we see here is a painting on wood with a golden background. So the background here, it's the heaven, not the sky, it's heaven. And heaven is golden because the body was understood in these times as the golden heaven. And here we have a picture that is rather flat. We have not many um, attempts to depict depth and three-dimensionality because the Pope didn't want this. It was uh, for God and not for people on the, world, on the world. That's why we do not have perspective at all or we have little, but it's not so much seen. And later on, we are in the times where perspective is invented or re-discovered, um, actually. We have this picture of the Madonna. We have a lot of perspective here in the background. You can see here in the background that we have houses. They are depicted precise in the perspective. We have not even the perspective of lines that we will deal with later, but we have here as well the perspective of the light, meaning that the light, uh, that the things when they are uh, far away, are going to be more blue or bluish. What we also have here, we have the yellow of the dawn here, but actually this is something that is driven from the content, meaning that the end, uh, the endless of Jesus Christ here, the endless and um, life, so immortality, is depicted here as in the perspective and in the light. But we can also see how the artist dealt with um, with a space uh, here. We have this alliteration to the motif in the background of Simone Martini. You see it here as well. So this is the actually the same thing done in a different way. By the way, um, this decoration from the Nimbus went later on out to the picture frame. We have it. Now here we have no picture frame, but you know it. We have all this um, motifs in the picture frame later on. But now here we have it in this uh, towel and it is it is an allegory that goes to the topic of Jesus who was born and he needs a little bit of shelter and that's why not the whole world is depicted here. But you can see here, we have a painting that is on a canvas. You can see it here. So we see here the end of the canvas. And when you draw with a, with a brush on a pencil, uh, on, a, uh, on a canvas, you can always get a little bit the impression of depth. And this changed a lot. Uh, the way of uh, handling a brush changed a lot of how people uh, or painters dealt with uh, the depth. We have here also shadows to depict uh, deep uh, valleys in the, in the fabric. 
and we have everywhere the overlapping stuff of hand and baby and um, fabric and fabric and landscape so we have this kind of different layers of a picture that are one beneath the other but here we have another impression we have the impression of one picture that is just here we have two things and they are here so we do not have this concept of overlapping what teaches uh, this to us when we want to sketch? I make an example here. I want to sketch uh, an apple. So I want to depict you what I mean by drawing some simple stuff, just the apples. Uh, I drew here this apple for you and I have to confess this is not um very well done we do not have any depth why don't we do have this this is because actually we have no overlapping what you can do is when you give a little bit of shadow to something you have a relation of the form by the shadow that uh, indicates the background like the table or whatever the surface that the apple is lay laying on this is the first thing that helps you to uh, create space and what are the other things when i uh, draw an apple as well so another one here so this is the rest of the flower and here around there is the apple easy form i have a second apple here and then I apply the same thing, like a little bit of indication of shadow, whatever it has to be, the same direction, but not so important how it is, something like this. Well, this helps, maybe some lines that go to the form, it helps to understand the form. Yeah, well, um, that's not very helpful, but it helps. What is the problem? What could I do? Do you remember the hand of Maria overlapped with the, uh, the body of Jesus Christ? So I can do the same concept here. I can say, well, I have here another apple. This apple lays behind uh, the other apple. Again, here is the fly, so the small thing of the apple. Some lines that indicate form, maybe some lines here as well. And again, the concept of the shadow. Okay, this is even better. So we have a uh, first thing. This is the shadow. Shadow and shadow. This is the first thing. And here we have the second thing. This is the overlapping. But when you overlap things, you should do the overlapping a little bit more precise in the form of a T. So of a T like the character T, and here you have to precise, so you pronounce it a little bit better. Yes, so you have those two options, and what you can do as well, you can do a horizon, maybe something like this. This helps to understand the form, uh, to locate, so now it's an apple on a table with a shadow, and one apple is closer to the next apple. Uh, this helps uh, to form space. Yeah, that's it. So actually you have three things. You have the shadow, you have the overlapping, with the preci precise uh, line of the, in T shape. And you have third, the possibility to do it with a horizon or the edge of a table or whatever. So, happy sketching, do the same, try out how you can solve the problem.